NCWC 2013 Singapore, NCWC 2018 Istanbul, FID Congress 2022 Oslo. Morning, he was referring to the, I mean, uh, his conference at Oslo. He guided projects for MTEC, VTEC students of engineering colleges, IIT in Madras, JNU to Hyderabad, and it were is also involved in the training of engineers. It's a very good uh, thing. You go through the YouTube thing, you will know what kind of uh, training he imparts to the budding engineers and so on. It's a pleasure to have uh, uh, listen to the uh, YouTube. <laughs> Engineer Silverton handled several prestigious projects during the past three and a half decades of his uh, illustrious uh, career. Some of the projects he undertook include affordable housing, buildings, residential, commercial, office, IT, industrial, hospitals. It is like uh, a number of degrees uh, held by Sundar Rao Garu. You know, he runs into number of lines, you go on reading it. So I have many, like hospitals, hostels, infrastructure, roads, bridges, metro and whatnot. You name anything that is here in this. Yeah. yeah, that is also uh, not sufficient. <laughs> Transmission line towers, FM, TV, microwave, cellular towers, providing architecture, engineering, project management services. The prestigious clients include Ministry of Finance, ILFS, Tech Mahindra, GVK, GMR, BSNL, IDEA, Airtel, Tata, Sake, Manjira, Janapriya. Only a name, a two name, a very few of these things. Now I present uh, Sri Surya Prakash to you. Uh, with his, I think he will uh, enthrall us with his stimulating uh, uh, lecture in another uh, half an hour. So, thank you so much. Now I request India Surya Prakash Karu to deliver his uh, technical lecture on buildings in distress and SOP per healthy and durable buildings. Uh, today I am very happy being introduced by Kanawal Dan, a senior person in our engineering sector. Actually I have come prepared for uh, one hour lecture, but I uh, will reduce it to half an hour. No, no, it is over our time itself. Uh, we started late by 45 minutes. So we have to manage, we in English, we have to manage the time. <coughs> and uh, you are all aware, recently we have seen in our uh, ACC groups that uh, in Chennai, there was a building, 17-story building, which was occupied about five years back, and uh, it started spalling due to corrosion. In fact, uh, that prompted uh, our secretary, Dukha Prasad, to ask him to present uh, what are the such a distresses in the building that we come across and what is the solution? The solution I offered was about three years back to Kredai Hyderabad. I ordered a book on uh, SOP actually it is not included in my introduction it's a, because it is a recent one and uh, our company ordered the book on SOP, Standard Operating Process for uh, Design and Maintenance of the Buildings. Uh, it was starting from planning to design and implementation and then maintenance, handing over also. So today I will be sharing quickly, I will not go into any detail, I have 320 slides actually, but I am expert in running the slides fast because I have been giving. <laughs> so these are all the three projects that we have done, ISB, 20 story building, GVK, Mall, and this is APIS of this building. These are the three buildings. Oh, okay. So my overview is introduction, building distress and case studies. I will share some of the important case studies that I have come across. And the consultants, the role of consultants and misnomer in consultants, because we are all consultants. Uh, first of all, I don't like the word structural design. We are not just structural designers. We are civil and structural consultants. In fact, uh, without civil, there is no structure. So first we have to 
current that to our client and the building construction SOP and causes and remedies final. This is the, my overall uh, board view of my presentation. And the forensic, what I am going to present is a forensic audit of the distressed buildings. That means technically what went wrong and how it went wrong and how to correct it. And then who is responsible for it and how to educate the clients on that and then need for SOP. This is my topic today. And uh, inception stage, the most important thing I always tell my clients is they have to spend time with the consultant. Unless we understand their requirement, what they are planning, functional requirements. All consultants should spend more time with the clients to understand the functional requirements and draft a document, FRD we call it, functional requirement document, and the client interaction, and then prepare the design intent. That client won't understand. This is for us, our consultant. So then, design basis report after design intent. We prepare which codes we follow, which roads we have to incorporate in the design. And then, investigation, most important. That is the soil investigation, geology, geology for large products like power plants and high-rise buildings, topography, environment, materials, availability of materials, which is very important. And uh, people like Mike Raman will solve it quickly. And uh, skilled workers and machinery available and resources like uh, farm work and uh, all the resources, material handling, these are all the resources that we require. And then go for the concept design based on this investigation and reports. And design coordination, this is the most important. Today only I had some SOS in our lunchtime from site, some coordination issues. In the, of course, it's a complicated project, but there will be coordination issues if we don't have coordination prior to the design. Coordination with electrical, coordination with air conditioning, coordination with plumbing and sanitary, firefighting, interiors, all we have to incorporate into our design. So this is the formulation stage where we start with the statutory appraisals, design development, and then construction engineering. This is what is missing in most of our consultants. In fact, unless we think of construction methodology, what construction uh, technology we are going to adopt in the construction, that comes from availability of time, cost and the availability of the technology itself. <coughs> Planning, quantity survey and buildability. Buildability is ignored in our country. When we start the construction, then we realize it is very difficult to transport the material or lift that particular uh, material. So these are all the things which we have to consider before only. And then we prepare the de detailed project report and then go for the technical sanction and just refreshing the process of the design. So that when I further talk, these are all the terminology I am going to use. Big documents, tender documents, quantity, specifications, schedule of items, quality and safety. These are all the sections in our big document which we will take care of. So next comes the construction stage. Once we have done the formulation and then in inception, formulation and then construction. So in construction we have a site enabling, most important. Uh, with the power, water, security, access roads, stores, office, labor, accommodation, internet, CCTV, boundary wall. These are all the aspects we covered in SOP actually. How to do this for a project? What is the size of the project? What are the requirements of power? Recently I got a call from my client. What is the generator I have to install? There is the power cut suddenly. So we have to tell quickly what is the generator required. But in the planning itself we have to do it in the beginning. Material test, concrete mix design, block marking, soil test, QC lab, sample room. In large, it's fairly large. Above 5 lakh square feet, we have to have a sample room at the side. Even up to above 2 lakhs also. Quality registers, which I have shared in the SOP. Actually, it is available in my website also, uh, in my YouTube also. Uh, uh, we have adopted uh, all the 22 quality registers as per the CVC norms. It helps engineers, not the clients following the quality registers as per CVC. Then method statement. This is what I am incorporating now in every project. We know that in most of the sites, when an engineer goes for inspection, 
he will start finding faults in the site. What we are doing actually, we are only giving a drawing to the site. Are we telling how to do the flooring or how to do the waterproofing, how to do the plaster? Unfortunately, the skill levels are dropping and unless we give a method statement for plastering, masonry, uh, that's not going to happen as per the quality we expect. And uh, there is no point in finding fault after going to the site. So better prepare the method statement. We are standardizing these method statements for standard activities and we have to issue that along with the drawing. So that if he follows the method statement, what are the safety aspects, what are the scaffolding to be done, what are the resources required, then only the work will happen as we think, as we have envisaged in our project. Stage passing, that is prior to commencement of activity and after the activity. We have to pass the stage, acceptance of the work done. Suppose we have done the excavation, we have to start PCC. So what are the tests to be done before PCC about the level of the pit or soil capacity expected? We simply write in the drawing, you go to the depth until you receive the hard scatter. This is a standard note we give in the drawing. But what is that hard scatter? It is actually SBC required. And uh, Umesh Rao, I don't know whether he told you or not when he came here, we have a crowbar test for SBC. So crowbar test is nothing but depth in inches. 50 by depth, that is the SBC. Uh, so, like that, we have empirical methods to identify the hard strata. Then, milestones in the project, the slabs, mainly any project we plan, ultimately the cycle time of the slab is the determining the overall project completion time. Next is the desnagging. After we do the work, before handing over, this snagging, this is what we miss in our schedules actually. There will be snags in construction. Any at site, you have a lot of problems happening. And unless we keep the time for snagging and desnagging, we will not complete the project. Otherwise, after occupancy, we will be doing this, this snagging. Handing over. These are the steps in construction. Now, consultants. We are all consultants. And what is our scope? That's what I said. We are not structural designers, we are civil and structural consultant. Let us correct ourselves. And the civil is a missing scope always. There is a structural consultant, there is an architect, there is electrical. Who, who is civil consultant? So we structural engineers have to do the civil also. And uh, construction engineering, if, if we are doing only structural design, who is the structural consultant there? Structural consultant is the one who takes care of construction engineering, every aspect of construction, planning, functional requirement. Next is the construction engineering is a missing scope. In our office, we have a construction engineering department, which will bridge the gap between design and construction. So construction engineering has to translate the design into implementable construction. Then construction supervision by qualified engineers civil and structural consultants to insist on certification by qualified civil uh, structural chief engineers. So, next is geotechnical consultant. We, are, we call soil consultant. I don't know that, that name where it comes from. Geotechnical consultant is the one not just for giving SPC. I have seen uh, soil reports one page paragraph. The SPC recommended is 30 tons per square meter, certified sign. How can I accept that? That is because of the client. They are not expecting more than that. So we have to educate the client. That's what I said. Though, in the though, though we explain all the things, they are not accepting. They are ready to pay the amount for only for that. I never accept. Yes. In fact, yes. there are projects, sir, where I have done soil investigation or geotechnical investigation four times. Unless I get boreholes and complete data which is yeah, it complied, is. I will not accept the report. It is correct, sir. But this is what I am saying. Next is the cost consultant, quality and safety consultant and cost consultant, proof consultant. This is also very important, the peer reviewer of the design. And then planning engineers. This is another missing scope in many projects. We don't have planning engineers. What is the role of, you can see in my YouTube, we have defined scope for planning engineers. There are 15 lectures on planning engineers. Starting from QS, studying the drawings to planning construction itself, scheduling. People think that we have to understand the method of construction and 
and required for each activity. Now failure. This is what is my main story today. What is a failure? Why failures happen? Failures happen because of the mismatch between design and construction in the actual condition. Loading, accident, material, construction method, structural system, corrosion, and expected life. These are all the aspects that I will be sharing today. And general loads like says, wind, dead load, and live load. And soil, settlement, liquefaction, expansive soils, and cage. These are all the I will be sharing the case studies of this people. I will not spend much time. And accident means fire, blast, impact, flood. And materials are poor quality, wrong specification, or shelf life, which we are talking about. The concrete or uh, cement or chemicals, mainly, what we use. Then structural system engineering error. I will share examples where it can go wrong. Corrosion and life of structure and quality plan. Quality assurance, quality control, audit, materials, works, and workmanship, and tolerances. IS 1200 is most important for many of the civil engineers don't refer to. It's very, very important. Clients say your quality is not good. Even if it is in tolerance, you have to tell what are the tolerances and where they stand with respect to the tolerance. Now, I'll get into the quick case studies. Interesting, actually. Some of them in my college, some of them I have taken from others. Excavation, shrinkage, farm work, staging, wind and masonry. Wind. Masonry failure due to wind. Have you come across any of it? Nowadays we are talking about lightweight bricks. There is no code actually for stability. Whatever code we have, I uh, will share that details. That only talks about clay bricks. Sir, in Jain to Hyderabad, I think one uh, packet failure is there due to the wind. It's a Jain to... Maybe. I, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll share my case. University case. What I have come across. And then pour water pressure. Pour water pressure, corrosion and clay soil. So these are all the case studies I'm sharing today. About uh, In two stages I'll share. Deep excavation shoring is very, very important. I have done at least two, three projects of deep excavation more than 20 meters within the city where we have buildings next to that. And uh, <coughs> my problem is, as a consultant, I have studied the soil report and I have recommended one method of shoring. Contractor takes deviation. Because you know, contractors go by their available resources. So there is a mismatch. I qualified my statement, but accident happened and people died. That's the unfortunate thing. But uh, this is where we have to be careful. If I had not qualified my design basis report about the quality uh, shoring system, I would have been behind bars as an engineer because I'm responsible for the safety of the people. So I'll show, uh, show with the picture. This is the building and excavation next. And uh, this is the shoring that is done. Uh, touch piles, we call. And you know, that, that is a 20 meter deep piles. Second pile, sir? Yeah, second pile. So this is the shoring. This kind of shoring you can adopt in uniform soils, actually. Like normal clay soils, like either clay soils or uh, sandy soils or normal soils. Mix of clay and uh, sand. So we had two pockets of excavation. In one pocket we had uniform soil, where we accepted the shoring touch pile. And other, where we had varying strata. We have the soil, we have the soft disintegrated rock, and then hard rock. So what happens is, before you excavate, you do the shoring. Piles you drive. When you drive the piles, you come across the short, soft disintegrated rock. You think it is a hard rock. It's very difficult to distinguish before opening the excavation. So before opening, we have done the shoring already. So they have terminated the piles at that 12 meters there. And you can see the soft disintegrated rock. And they have done using the breakers because we are not allowed uh, casting. When the breakers were done, there was an undercut below the piles. And you know, these piles are uh, put by anchors. So these anchors depend on the weight. So they assume that piles are standing vertically stable. But once there is undercut, the pile settles. When the pile settles, weight releases. When the weight releases, there is no anchor. All the piles will collapse. 
So this is what happened exactly. So we did, fortunately, we did the structural health monitoring of the adjoining buildings. We installed the sensors. We have recorded. We could exactly find when this was because of this. So when we have accepted with our qualification, we knew the risk and we have monitored the risk. So we could reduce the dam and that whole thing collapsed. Before picture we had piles, now there are no piles. It has collapsed and we restored in 48 hours this uh, stability of the building because the people are concerned about the building where 2000 people are working, IT people. Next is the excavation collapse. This is what actually happens in the site. Normal foundation excavation we do and the normal tendency of the contractor is to dump the earth on the excavated site. Already there is a shear imbalance and we are adding the war body and it fails. So in one of my projects, five people died and next after that I have put my uh, big bold note that we don't dump the earth on the side of the excavators. Next is the piling test. This is another major thing happens in most of the projects. The method of boring determines the capacity of the pile. We design theoretically pile capacity as 200 tons, 250 tons. But actually when we do the pile test, initial pile load test, we are getting 100 tons capacity. Though theoretically it is 200 tons. And it is because of the boring method. Next is the double stage collapse. In most of the construction sites, whenever we go for double staging, if it is not designed properly, then we collapse. We have so many failures of slabs during casting in Hyderabad, in uh, many cities. So, people die also, and in many projects it happened. So, we have to be very cautious when we are giving the double staging. We have many systems available. We have to insist on those systems to be used. Canopy, this is another very, very important because canopy, you know, it is uh, independent. The normal building, we have all four sides columns. Whereas canopy, we don't have any columns on one side, pre cantilever. So there can be collapse towards that. So we have to brace it and anchor it to the main columns in the building. Next is the slab, slab design failure due to torsion and corner span. This most uh, occurring error in flat slabs. In flat slabs, we use the direct design method. And direct design method has got so many qualifiers, like minimum more than three spans, and span to span variation should not be more than 20%. All these qualifiers are there in the code, but in the many projects we you know are we still we miss. So that we have to be very careful. And uh, so this is the result of that. In a flat slab, we have to do the strengthening by introducing the steel capitals to the columns. Next is the flat slab design failure due to, uh, this is what I said, inappropriate use of direct design method, number of spans and span difference. Next is the no final setting due to excessive retort. This uh, happened in the initial stage of ready mix actually. You know, they give the retarder to the driver truck driver, transit mixer driver. And that fellow to save his time, whatever is given, he will pour and start the truck. And we casted the slab, after 24 hours also, there is no initial setting the in the slab. So, plasticizers has also similar effects. No. Overdoses. Ah, overdoses. 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 We have to follow the mixing. I am talking about the retarder here. Retarder we use for delayed initial setting. Yes. Maximum 4 hours is what we allow. Uh, through our design also, people have poured the excess uh, retard and this happened. Next is the shrinkage grass due to uh, dry summer and improper curing. Fortunately, maybe in places like Kakinada it may not happen, but Hyderabad we face this very often in summer particularly due to the humidity is very low. That's the dry climate and the really, uh, plastic shrinkage very quickly. And most misleading is the cracks that appear actually because shrinkage also happens like a we have a solution for that. It follows the failure of the You have to record the levels of the shuttering before concreting 
and you have to record the levels of the concrete after concreting and you have to record in below build so we have to do that after construction dps and client wants to add two slabs overnight and we have to take care of that next is the pore water pressure to closure of relief well in fact in 20 30 story building we have done a wrap with the two basements and then we have uh, estimated pore water pressure and we have given a relief well for pore water pressure relief you know? uplift relief ah uh, for uplift uh, and below yeah subsoil drain subsoil drain and it so happened client to after 10 years of the construction they thought why this open well will close it for this have planned sir is there any instrumentation that was done no for the measurement of this is about 15 years back we didn't do but we have the instrumentation sir yeah i know right. now now we have very good advanced uh, instrumentation stress monitoring and all so this is the podium structure there are two towers of uh, 30 floors and in between there is a podium and the podium we have a swimming pool and the clubhouse and all beautiful dam and overnight it got lifted podium got lifted two story and columns cracked like that shear fail in the columns and this is the structure podium structure and this is the swimming pool and all this is the model we did after that to estimate the pore water pressure and then why it has the deflected shape of we we restricted the design to 2 meter pore water pressure whereas the pore water pressure increased to 10 meters because of plugging but given the relief to the pore water pressure the podium has come back that is the beauty of uh, engineering and this is the profile of the water table we have plotted the profile of the water table and then designed that this is the water flowing after giving the relief to the pore water we ignored the well and then we have created a, a water system to release the pressure pore water pressure next is the due to closing down of spouts this is a very classic example i you will come across definitely we designed the terrace large span structures and during construction for curing we plug the spouts down water spouts you know then we forget that then there is a heavy rain one day and there is a 1 meter water nicely stagnated on the terrace which we don't design no terrace we design for one ton load and the slab fail due to that next is the due to flooring due to expansive soils uh, this is the clay soils this is another very classic case where about 1000 buildings were filling uh, one by one every year five buildings are filling and uh, then we had to give a solution external solution because you cannot solve a thousand building what we did is we studied the water table and we released the water uh, table so that there is no expansion in the clay instead of solving uh, 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 attacking the expansion we attacked not to have expansion they were saying that yeah they were saying so these are all so these are all the cracks that happened in those buildings expansion see the gap in the brick wall and these are all the very important uh, buildings that these are uh, and next is the masonry wall collapse due to wind and they have used the lightweight blocks ac blocks particularly when we use the ac blocks in the buildings we have to check the stability due to wind and we have done about 20 years back also the method of uh, bands creation of reinforced bands and mullions and if you calculate so yes it's many people complain about cracks in the walls one is due to the uh, bonding and the other is due to the design itself structural design itself so for structural design our recommendation is don't exceed six times the thickness of the wall the height normally we follow 18 times for the half wall if it is uh, you know what is 18 18 is unit weight of uh, brick wall kilometer per cubic meter whereas we are using ac blocks which are per cubic meter so you have to follow 6d for the height of the wall and create the band so this is the total wall collapse of course it's the exceptional case it's a steel structure actually 
And in the steel structure, they have used lightweight blocks. So these are all the lightweight blocks collected after collapse. So we have verified this design and the solution. And also this large windows, very beautiful, not structurally designed <coughs> windows. We have to, what I'm trying to say is, we have to design brick walls, we have to design, we have to design doors also. So this is very, very important. Let's not take anything for granted. There is no structure that can stand without design. So this is the analysis that we did and found that the deflections are very excessive and we could justify the collapse and then we have given the reinforcement to the structure and then retrofitted that. Next is the corrosion. Sir, one question. Yeah. Uh, regarding this uh, CLC, there are no bands, there are no millions. Actually, wall cannot transfer the load, you know, you have to, either by stability, normal overturning movement, you have to check. If it cannot uh, transfer, uh, resist the overturning movement, provide the bands and create a frame within the brick wall itself and create small panels of the brick wall which will transfer the load to the millions and bands. That's what we did, we have been doing. So, like the water load from eighteen times or six times, is there anything million to million? Length. Calculation. Actual length of the wall in AAC blocks, you should not exceed ten feet. Yeah. You create a million. You create a million. Anchor it to the top slab and the bottom beam. The reinforcement. Yeah, reinforcement. You can design that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Construction line with the length of the AC block. Yes, yes, yeah. we have the AS code, sir. Yeah. Now we have the AS code. I have, I have developed this methodology. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. We have been following. In my projects, we never got any problem where we are designed because we have been designed. But after seeing this kind of cases, I thought I must include in SOP this method. Next is the corrosion. So, this is an industrial structure, steel structure with excessive corrosion in the steel because the exposure condition and the protective coating that is required for the steel will not be done. And next I will show you the case of uh, concrete. So see the condition of the structure. So this is the kind of fumes. And next this is a building in uh, Calcutta. And uh, this is the concrete. You can see the reinforcement. You don't have to use the rebar locator. <laughs> it shows by itself. So this is the steel in columns as well as beams and slab, oh, entire steel corroded because of inadequate power, because of exposure condition being not taken as CD. So we have IS quadrant provisions, but they are not followed in this. See the column. And this is the columns, ties also you can see. Next is part two, structural system earthquake. I'll quickly run through, I'll not, uh, because time is uh, running short. So structural system is very, very important. Projects, this happening, people take stat results and provide the steel. Who will do the details? Have you plotted force diagram for your structure? This is what angst us. I am not saying we all see us, we, we have learned bending moment diagram and shear force diagram. But unfortunately, once the stat result comes, they would have struggled with stat to get the result. When the result comes, they will give it to the draftsman for steel. Like SBC in soil, steel, tension steel and compression steel, that's all. We are not detailed. So you can see, there was one building, in fact, referred to me, it was leaking. They thought it's only waterproofing problem. When I went and saw, I found much bigger than waterproofing. In fact, recently I shared about waterproofing advertisement. In our ASC group, I think. I objected to waterproofing people advertising, just use this membrane, it will solve your deep sea cage and leakage and forever. That's not correct. First, first the structure has to be base to be proper. Here, that's what happened. So, here, these are all the photographs of the building. What happened is, you know, when you have the grid of beams, there are primary beams, there are secondary beams, there are tertiary beams, and there are cross beams. So in this, what we found is, we got the drawings of the structure. It was done by proper structural engineer only, but detailing was not done according to behavior. So primary beam is treated as tertiary beam, secondary beam is treated as primary beam, like that. So 
it has failed, it deflected and cracked and we found a lot of cracks. You can see this crack. Another interesting, uh, in my project only it happened, my office has given a drawing saying uh, typical detail of the beam, support, they have size columns and then provide uh, longitudinal steel uh, attainment. Inside, they don't know, no? the site engineer, they thought that support is beam to beam and they have curtailed the whole uh, main reinforcement and it cracked. When I went to the site, I just quickly, within 10 minutes we could locate the error and we have given the solution to that. So this kind of things will happen, that's why I am sharing this, we'll, we cannot give it to our uh, junior engineers or detailers for uh, drawing and we have to verify being the main structural uh, uh, consultant. So we did that uh, solution and also the cracks in the walls, we have done the stitching and given solution so that there are no further cracks after that. Because basically the structure has failed. So we have to restore the structure and we have to restore the masonry also, structural. So this is what we did. And next is the earthquake. As introduced, I was in Ahmedabad on 30th of January 2001 after the earthquake. I spent one week studying the failures and none of the buildings are designed for earthquake, unfortunately, though it was in zone 3. So uh, we found a lot of problems, so see the problem. So many, and lift core, you know, this is the core actually, and it's a phenomenon, reversal, stress reversal phenomenon in the brick masonry. Yeah, the diagonal attention yeah, back the in both sides due to the reversal of the yeah, yes. So these are all the things which we have uh, given the restoration method, and main we have now IS-1893, the stiffness variation between the floors, and uh, open steels particularly, there are problems like this, and so we have given the standard stiffness uh, method like for a common man so that you give the brick walls whatever total brick walls you have in the upper floor you give equal <coughs> thickness in the cement so that it will contribute to the stiffness and reduce the difference between the stiffness that's what we have given uh, to eliminate the soft story effects yeah soft story so we have done that restoration and then uh, oh sorry next uh, so earthquake, we have given a report and uh, there should be a structural engineer, there should be a geotechnical engineer, there should be a supervising engineer. Unless all three sign, you should not accept any building as structurally stable. Next is the fire. Fire accidents do happen. Till this fire accident happened, I used to think that post tension slabs are not good against resisting fire. But this accident has given me a lesson that see, this is after the fire. Whole reinforcement, bottom reinforcement got exposed. Whole cover spoiled and this building was safe actually after the fire because of the post tension. And we restored this, of course. See the drop, pan drop panels. It was a flat slab. And drop panels also, the reinforcement got exposed. And we restored this after uh, investigating. Here, that levels helped us. Le uh, we did the level record. And that level record helped us and we, re we could restore that. Next is the fire accident in steel structures. This is another fire accident. See the, how the, the strong I-beams we think, how they get twisted in the fire uh, due to the temperature and without treatment for the fire. So this is another inverted beam neutral axis. This is very, very common thing. It happened about 30 years back also. It happened recently also. Mostly, we detail the inverted beams in the slabs, in canopies also. We fail to check the neutral axis, depth of neutral axis, and then we don't provide the top reinforcement in the slab. In inverted beam, the whole slab will be in tension. And the slab reinforcement in the top layer, it is going to crack. So that kind of through crack in the slab. From the top it initiates and it extends up to the bottom. So we have to check this. Lack of uh, weatherproofing, ah, this is another. I'm sure you must have come across in even five storied building, every fifth floor will be having extensive cracks. This is very, very common. Uh, I am giving solution for that. To avoid that, 
One is weather proof, that is temperature control. You view the insulation. Big bat also is good enough. Not screed actually. Concrete screed is not weather proofing. Concrete screed can give you slope only. Weather proofing is very, very essential. And then you also provide in every terrace that is for temperature only. And uh, you have to provide proper temperature analysis for the top floor is free to expand. That's why in top floor you get the cracks. So you can solve that. And next is removing counter props. This is another interesting story in post tension slabs. We have post strips in post tension slabs. And then long building, not small building. If the building length is more than 60 meters, we will have post strip. You can have up to 60 meters. Beyond 60 meters, you have to give a four-step and then do it. Knowing this, in our drawings, we have mentioned that you have to keep the counter prop for three slabs. And you cannot keep four strips unclosed for more than, this is the note we have given. But what happened? They have left the four strips in two slabs. Counter props also, they kept three levels. But what happened? Midnight, two o'clock, when concreting happened, they have uh, need, they needed some props and they removed the counter props. It affected three levels of slabs like this. See this. This is the cracks in the slab of 13 meter span. Man. And this is the post strip and this is the this slab has become a cantilever slab because they removed the props. And uh, we have jacked up and we rehabilitated that. And uh, next is micro segregation. This is a very, very interesting case. In fact, it was a precast uh, construction. Wall panels are being cast at the side. When I went to the site, I asked my engineer, what is this? You are finding reinforcement pattern in the jam plan. Oh, it is common, sir. He said. No, no, it's not common for me. So I went into the detail. I went to the site of casting this wall. Then I, I checked the water cement ratio in the mixed design, it was proper, and they are casting properly, but I could see water flowing. That means there is excess water. How it is happening? Batching plant, it's not happening. At site, it's not happening. Then who is the culprit? Transit mixer. The driver. And Mason asked the driver to add water to keep it uh, running. And for Mason, it is easy. So this is what happened, found the reason for micro segregation. Storing pile, of course, I have explained. This is, oh, sorry, this is the case in Vijayawada, actually. Clay soils. Storing piles in clay soils. Here, the anchorage was not done, what I have shown. And uh, we have done the analysis. I'll show you interesting. This is the analysis. Ah. See the capping beam. Capping beam has reflected out because it's not anchored. It's very difficult to anchor in clay soils. You cannot give the uh, soil anchors in the clay soil. And next is the pile load test failure, of course, I think. Next is the blast, of course. Blast also can happen, so we have to take care. This is a small residential building where LPG cylinder blast happened. Whole family died, actually. But building also collapsed. Now, the causes and remedies. Clean beam. This is a very, very interesting thing. Many people think that you provide a plinth beam, there is no CRS wall required below. We have to consider the natural ground level and formed ground level and plinth level and provide the proper retaining and confinement for the wall, uh, soil. Curing. This is another important thing uh, for columns nowadays. Nobody is doing this gunny bag or uh, continuous curing. And wall plastering. This is the actual photograph when I went to the site. See, there are no strips of the wall. In the olden days, we had to provide the level of the plastering and then we create the strips and maintain the plane. And we are complaining of cracks in the plastering. And simple air crack is a common word. And we accept air crack, it's okay. That's, but why it is happening is because of the... I'll ask another important question. When we have a two-coat plaster, external wall, in two coat blaster, what should be the richer mix? First coat or second coat? First coat should be the richer mix. Oh, that should be 49 months. I ask this question to most of the engineers, they give a reverse answer. 
बिकॉज दे फाइंड द फिनिशिंग फॉर मैथ्स एंड सेकेंड क्वार टीचर मिक्स इज बेटर should be the linear mix but use the that should because of this not being followed you get cracks in plaster sure i because it's synthetic no right? well, only only if you if the nation prefers to provide two coats dobara yeah dobara is only single yeah. here we do only one line that's all okay. so cracks are in it Next is the water proofing. Giving specification for water proofing below the footing. If you are not give below the footing, the exposure condition is not normal. It is severe because always when you excavate for footing, there will be water collected in the pit. You are disturbing the natural soil strata. So when it is exposed to water for continuous two months, three months, the footing. I have got the photographs of the footings. Excavate uh, removed after 10 years, and I have taken the pictures of condition of steel below the footing. They are not proper. They corrode actually. <coughs> they are in tension. So what I say is, either we are giving 50 mm power for the footings bottom, but are we checking for the stress? For uh, what uh, I mean, like crack what? width, we have to check it as well. Check it. You have to limit the crack width to 0.00. The strain in the footings you should not permit. Otherwise, provide the water proofing. One more thing is uh, the side cover. This is also much more important yeah. for the footings. So exactly. 75 mm water cover. But this here you see mm. what we are giving is an annular water annular for the entire structure and the retaining walls and the slabs and these water retaining structures. Some for uh, swimming pool and all these manholes and then terrace, all this. So this is the landscape on podium terrace. We have podiums in the building, and how to do the landscape? Architects want landscape, but they have to give this required. Value. This is the drainage, drain cells actually. We have done. Your file, nineteen eighty-seven. After that, it's not done. And we have so many bricks, solid cement block, PLC, AAC, but we are not following that. So these are all the limitations: height to thickness ratio given in the code, and we have to follow different things for AAC block. And there are two codes for mass and grade: two two one two, and uh, that is for general guidelines for construction, and one nine zero five for stability. We have the special publication also for the thickness. Yeah. So we have to follow all that. Just I wanted to highlight that. Methodology for brick masonry, weather proofing, black slabs, deflection tape, long-term deflection tape. How many of us are doing for the whatever deflection we are getting in the stair is uncracked short plastic, time. short time. You have to take into the creep into the account. Creep protection, shrinkage effect, and all that crack dissection. Or if you don't have that energy. Take the elastic uncracked section deflection and multiply with two point five. Still, it has to be within the LBD ratio, LBD delta ratio. Causes and remedies. These are all the remedies I have given. Uh, I will not read. Uh, sorry, it is important that you tell. Shrinkage water cement is also very important. Delayed concrete tarantula planning, poor sequence concrete, bad drawing, and then ha huh, poor sequence. Before we do the concreting with RMC, particularly, we have to plan the pore sequence and identify the construction joints and give the detail for those construction joints. Inadequate power slab, some important lack of inadequate tape, and finally, inadequate tape. This is also very important. We have to specify in the drawing what is the diameter of the tape, placing of the tape, and the diameter. What is the maximum length you can go for in the tape? Foundation settlement engineering, expansive soils, backfill compaction, inadequate, ge no geotechnical investigation, expansion and treatment, reinforcement. This also construction sequence. All the remedies. Deep excavation, shoring design brief is very important. Construction work during period and period putting embedded pipes. Uh, this is another very very important. The electrical pipes. Some projects we have come across two three layers of electric pipes running in our slab. We have 150 mm, whereas the overall layer of 
electrical pipes in 70 times, not allowed. Only one layer, you have to. Uh, and the flooding in vicinity, groundwater table. Yeah. Quickly, I'll run through. Part, there are three parts in this SOP. Part one is for general planning. Part two is for design and all. Part three is for construction. Project implementation. So this is all. Element of this free of cost. Hyderabad. If you just write to them, they will courier it. They don't charge you. And it's about 400 pages book. Actually, you told me last minute. Otherwise, I would have brought that book. And uh, I'm sharing the excerpts of it. I have soft copies because I'm the author. If anybody is very keen, I can share that uh, PDF also. Yeah, it's a knowledge actually. What we follow in our office, we document it. Yeah. Only to our members. And uh, with a condition that it is not circulated anymore. Yeah. I, I am okay with uh, Akinada members using it, but it's a, it's a copyright. Yeah. So design basis, design intent, design brief, we have defined all this, what we have to do, and construction process, time, cost, quality, safety, transparency, and then this is the master flowchart for developer. There will be project conception stage and statutory approvals, era compliance, and then Contract. We have about 32 consultants defined, like landscape, facade, engineer. All these are the consultants. Uh, first, it comes. Uh, do you know structural bone vibration and IC? I mean, some building, some hotels, I'm sure you must have stayed. In some hotels, you stay in the room, you don't get any noise. You get even the vehicle passing through, you get the noise. This is called structural bone vibration. The, uh, so, we have a specialist analysis, analysis for this structural bone vibration to avoid this kind of uh, noise problem. So, this is the flowchart of inception phase. This we have prepared about 25 years back in our office uh, for project management and then reconstruction phase, height analysis report, green spread. Preliminary inspection reports, investigation, and then soil investigation studies, number of boreholes to be done. We have given all that in that course. From the course only, it's not our invention. And uh, then depth of exploration to be done, and in slope of grounds, particularly 3D and 5D kind of uh, clear distance between the footings. And environmental impact assessment. So these are all the investigations that we have given. Uh, what for what size of project we have to go for what type of investigation and uh, heat gain, heating, ventilation, HVAC also, unitary air, lighting. What are the lux levels required? For example, recently we are doing gold manufacturing unit. So the lux level required is 1000. So imagine what kind of lighting you have to do for that. Similarly, normal shops, office, what are the Level. So, planning, scheduling, statutory approvals, all stages we have defined in this book. Due to paucity of time, I'm skipping all this. Plumbing, electrical, firefighting, NOCs, what are NOCs required? And uh, all that we have very exhaustively we have given. And landscaping consultants, civil and structural consultants, and drawings, general notes, typical sections, foundation, exploration plan. How many of us give the expression plan with the shoring system to be given? And then list of drawings, schedule of drawings. This is what I insist in all my projects. Every consultant has to give the schedule of drawings so that the engineer on site knows what drawing to expect, what for what drawing he has to wait for. List of drawings and then so all disciplines we have given, what are the minimum drawings to be given for consultant, gas supplier. Unity coordination. Ah, here facade consultant, lighting consultant, all that we have defined. Cost US consultant, project management, BPM and development stage. 
and the project management. Yeah. So this is the construction stage. Planning is a short cost and value engineering, scheduling, tendering process, bill of points, vendor selection, and claim management. These are all the stages in target dates. This is scheduled time management. This is for schedule, activity control, and the resource plan. Resource plan is what is very, very important in schedule when we talk about. Under pre qualification, bidding, base zero. Nowadays, with GST, whatever estimate we do, we have to do without the GST of the individual material. And add GST again, because that is a very simple thing. But in most of the GC, you get the rate with GST and then include it in the base rate. So that's a mistake. And they add GST at the end. So there's a margin for negotiation. <laughs> so next is the quality plan. Very, very important. Uh, assure, quality assurance, quality control, audit, documentation, implementation, drawing, specification, and quality. And finally, value of the quality. So these are all the simple channels because it goes to sandwich panel. All technology also. We have defined what are all the technologies have concrete and uh, precast concrete, all this, you know, uh, even three dimensional precast, project handing over, customer training also. Project. We did some of the project handing over processes also for large projects. So we documented the operational document, financial document, legal ownership document, all that. So it's all available. So this finally you can get all this information in my YouTube channel by my name, So if I missed anything, you can check in that. As said, uh, I have documented all the process of construction starting from preparation of dpr contract management contract administration and the costing of the project all that i documented and detailing rcc detailing detailing is documented and you can go through and advise me if i have missed anything thank you I have two questions, sir. Uh, two minutes only. Sir Prakash Thank you. 